Hi, I'm Jennifer Corson and welcome to The Resourceful Renovator. This show is going to be all about concrete. That can be quite imaginative and also very innovative. So we're going to show you all about it in our main two stories. First off, I'm going to join Tom Livingston at a very unique concrete house. It's about 60 years old and full of imaginative detail. Tom thinks that concrete is really a misunderstood material and it's actually quite sculptural. So block out some time for us as we've got a solid half hour of concrete ideas here on The Resourceful Renovator. Today I met with Tom Livingston at the Charles McDonald House. Charles McDonald was a very talented man who had a passion for designing and building with concrete, though he was also an accomplished painter. This is a very unique house. It's built totally of concrete. And um, it's, uh, it's built by Charles MacDonald, who was a very unique individual. He built it from about 1915, over a period of time, to about 1930 or 35. Now, what was his background? Well, he was, he was a Nova Scotian. He was a farmer from a very, fairly simple background, born in 1874. And uh, he had a local education, probably the equivalent of elementary school education. Was apprenticed to um, a carriage maker, among other things. And then got a wanderlust. And about 1897, I think, went away to sea. Now this, of course, is a, a shipbuilding district. It was very easy to go away to sea that in those days. And he, he traveled all over the world, absorbing sights. Uh, he learned things. He read voraciously. And he came back at about, in about 1903 uh, with, with re a real education from, from abroad. And what did he do at that point? Uh, at that point, he had, he'd, he'd been reading a lot about, um, about concrete. Of course, that, that, at that time, things like the Bauhaus, the architectural movements were happening, artistic movements. And uh, he decided that concrete and cement was the way to go. So he, he built a, a cement factory right on this site. And actually, this was a, a, a single story at that time. Mm -hmm. And he started making, among other things, uh, cement blocks, concrete blocks, cisterns, anything in, in concrete at all for the local market and did very well at it. Now, take me on a tour of this place, Tom. It's such a unique house. Maybe we can start from the outside. That's right. As you come into the house itself, you'll see this marvelous gate and, and, and fence area with, with the beautiful uh, trellis over it. The grounds are just incredible. Yeah. As you mentioned, the entry is quite something with a bougainvillea growing over it. But even the animals in the yard, they're really quite unique. That's right. He populated his yard with, uh, with deer, uh, a lady washing her hair. He has a, a, a cougar wandering around. Basically, whatever caught his fancy, uh, he, he sculpted in concrete. Now, Tom, as we come inside, this sculpture really continues on the interior as well. Maybe you can describe some of the things we're seeing here. Well, he built, um, he built the fireplace, which, of course, is also the central supporting uh, column uh, for the, uh, the house itself. He built that in a monolithic type of cement with, um, with bas-relief sculptures all around it. He loved Indian motifs, those types of things, animals. Mm -hmm. uh, even the deer over the fireplace itself is made of, of cement. <laughs> wow. Now, how about the stair, Tom? It's really quite a unique thing. It is indeed. Of course, it's a very steep stair. It wouldn't meet um, modern building code. But, of course, he was trained as a ship's carpenter, and all ship stairs at that time were very steep, so this was normal to him. Uh, on the stair itself, there, as you can see, there is a, uh, an Indian maiden with a canoe. And, again, he did this with his own ferro-cement techniques. Even the small dioramas all around, there's one that, that has a, a red light that's behind it, and it's just very intricate and beautiful. And that, again, he did uh, with the same sort of techniques. As a matter of fact, the entire house, if we look at it, is built as a sculpture. It is uh, it's quite incredible the way he did it, the same way that he did his sculptures in the, in the front yard. Even the birdhouses outside are of, of cement. Um, before we get to more information about concrete, I'm noticing that Charles McDonald was also a very talented artist. He was. When he was in elementary school, he evinced a, 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 a love for art. But of course, that wasn't encouraged in those days because it wasn't considered one of, the, one of the practical things to do in life. But when he went away to sea, he developed this extensively. He had a, um, an album, which basically was like a, a modern snapshot album nowadays, which he populated with ships, um, pictures of ships, sketches in, in, uh, in watercolor, in pen and ink and pencil. And he developed, as you can see, an amazingly uh, talented way of drawing. Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting approach. And the effect is reminding me of something Mediterranean. There's really a lot of architectural influences in this building. Yeah, he came back 
full, just full of ideas. He'd been to the Caribbean, he'd been to India, as you say, the Mediterranean. I think he uh, probably uh, went to Barcelona and saw some of Gaudi's uh, phenomenal things which were being produced at the time. So he came back full of these ideas, full of colors, mm -hmm. and all sorts of places in the house. You can, you can see examples of a little bit from here, a little bit from there. Mm -hmm. This colorful work in his art really shows, I think, best in his cottages that he's built. Maybe you can tell us a bit about those. Well, among other things, when he came back from his sea travels, he not only had absorbed ideas uh, of art and, uh, and engineering, but uh, at the time there were many political movements uh, afoot on the world. Karl Marx had only been dead about 20 years. And he came back um, with a lot of socialist ideas, which he put into practice in his, in his daily life throughout the rest of his life, as a matter of fact. So one of the things he did when he established this concrete brick factory was uh, to, uh, of course, he had men working for him. And it was all done, by the way, by hand. All the cement was mixed by hand. Um, but during the 30s, when, of course, people were out of work um, in droves, he kept his men going by having them build a series of tiny, whimsical cottages in Huntington Point, mm. uh, all of which are, uh, there are five of them, there were five, one has been destroyed since. Um, they're all, it's, it's, I guess his motivation was fairly unique in the world because most people uh, do things either for um, uh, self-aggrandizement or for, uh, for monetary gain. He did it for pure artistic endeavor and also because he, he believed in what he was doing. He believed in, the, in, in socialism and he believed in keeping his men going. Those cottages remind me of uh, pictures in fairy tale books. They're just so curvaceous and colorful. They're absolutely wonderful. And um, the society actually is hoping that we can uh, acquire one. Great. Tom, this really was a unique man, wasn't he? He really was. And I think that um, one thing that the Charles McDonald Society is trying to do is to, to make um, people more aware of what uh, an incredible individual he was. Now, the reason the society was formed was that this unique house came up for sale last summer. Mm -hmm. And we were worried that, uh, that it would be sold and basically destroyed uh, simply because uh, a lack of interest, I suppose. And one of the offers to purchase on this house last summer was based upon all the sculptures being taken away and, and basically destroyed. So seven of us got together. We didn't know each other to begin with. We got together and we had two weeks to raise $10,000, uh, which was the down payment for the mortgage, secure a mortgage, and, and buy the house. And we were successful. We had our grand opening just uh, this month where the Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia broke a concrete ribbon <laughs> and cut a cake in the uh, shape of a cement block. And we're open now for the public all summer. We have two tour guides and we're, we're holding a number of events throughout the year. So really what we've done is a very, very exciting thing. And I'm, I'm so, uh, as you can see, I'm just so uh, interested in, in, in learning more about Charles McDonald's life and really showing this house to, to Canada because it is one of ours. Well, it's not only a great example of a work of a Canadian, but a great example of work in concrete. I've enjoyed the tour. Thanks, Tom. Great pleasure, Jen. Come again. Mm -hmm.